Good afternoon, LEC community. I'm Edgar Palacios, founder of the Latinx Education Collaborative. I'm here with our chief community officer, Susana. Susana, how are you doing? Hey, Edgar. I'm good. How are you? Doing well. Um, we've been hanging out all afternoon, so I'm just I'm just checking in one more time with you to make sure you're okay. I'm uh, good. <laughs> but we are thrilled um, to be hanging out with the crew from Brookside Charter School. How's it going, folks? It's going well. Doing Hi, good. everybody. Doing Thanks good. for having us. Ryan, Emily, James, thank you so much for being here. And so we're just going to go ahead and jump right in, if that's okay with you. Please. Awesome. All right. So our first question for you all, tell us a little bit more about Brookside Charter School. Yes. Uh, Brookside Charter School is uh, a school of about 720 students, um, pre-K through eighth grade. It's located on 63rd and Woodland. Um, I wanted to share our mission vision with you guys because it was made by our stakeholders. Um, we had everybody participate in making it. So um, here it is for you to see. And um, like our, our vision is um, that we empower students to be leaders of their tomorrow. And we don't know what their tomorrow looks like, but we want to empower them to be um, leaders and whatever they come across. And some of our key words are growth, mom, mindset, cultural competence, and nurturing the whole child. Um, we don't bus at our school by design. Um, we want to know your families and we want your families to know us. So we interact daily at the door um, on both sides of the day. And um, we are a leader in me school. We um, practice the ha habits of si the seven habits of highly effective people. And um, we are a free public charter school in Kansas City. That's great to hear, uh, Emily. So our um, next question is, as an organization um, here in this space, what do you do and how do you support um, Latinx educators? You guys want to speak or you want me to go? Yeah, I can, I can uh, speak to that for a second. Um, so what I'll say is that for all of our teachers at our school, uh, especially our new teachers. All teachers receive a mentor teacher that has been in the school for several years to help guide them. Um, all of our new teachers experience our new teacher induction program. So they get a uh, new uh, PD before school starts before we welcome everyone else back. And we also have monthly meetings for them throughout the school year. Uh, we also have uh, specialized coaches uh, to help uh, guide all of our teachers. Um, so I think that um, those are really some key areas that we help support the growth for all of our teaching staff. And I'll jump in there to answer that question also. Um, we are a very collaborative school. So most of the things we do, we do at our school to help our students is collaborative. Um, the leadership has an open door policy to where if the teacher have a question or what have you, they're always welcome to come in. And that's just to name a few things that we, we do at Brookside Charter School. So to follow up on that, I would say that um, the large, uh, we have um, 38 students at our school right now that um, identify as Latinx. So we don't have a vast um, amount, but I do predict that it's going to be a growing population within our school and that we're going to need to find the representation to match that population and make sure that our, um, that, uh, our structure and our practices are are also culturally sound. So what we have done is invite Edgar in to come in and do an audit. Uh, unfortunately, we're distanced right now. So I don't know what kind of work we can get done um, right now, but uh, we want to listen. What James said about being open door is very true. Uh, we want to align our teachers with affinity groups. If we don't have enough affinity within our school, then we want to help you find it throughout the city in a group like Latinx Ed Collective or um, other uh, PD opportunities that are around, you know, that. Um, um, and then uh, finally, if there is something that we're not doing, it, as a leader in my school, you have the opportunity to make an action committee. So uh, our teachers can start their own action committee and get kids on board and they can lead uh, a change that they see is needed. So really, um, we're not the experts at what um, all Latinx teachers would need, um, but we want to invite you to please come join us because our students need you 
and they're going to continue to need you. So um, I don't want to put the soul on um, the Latinx community. I want to educate myself too, but I do want to let you know that uh, they're coming our way and, and we want to start getting involved in knowing how to include you in our space. And just to piggyback real quick, this is going to be quick. Edgar, <laughs> you missed a real opportunity to come and visit our school. Uh, and that's really all I have to say about that. You missed a very- He's been there, James. He's he, been there. He's been there. <laughs> oh, my bad. So you already know that. <laughs> You know, um, I got to say, I really, truly enjoyed my uh, my tour of and in fact, I, I got to witness. I think we were doing a tornado drill at that time or something, some, something similar. Good time. And so um, I really enjoyed being with the I think the kindergartners, um, if I'm not mistaken. And it was awesome. I always I always love being in, in schools. And so um, it was an incredibly welcoming environment. Um, and, and to Emily's point, you know, something that I do appreciate in some of the, some of the conversations that we've had thus far is really um, you are trying to prepare. You understand that um, our community is is becoming more brown, so to speak, um, and so that you're 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 wanting to bring in additional supports and making sure that um, the community is well represented and their voices are heard. So I I, I highly appreciate that. Um, let's talk a little bit about. Um, the opportunities that you currently have coming into next year, do you have any uh, job opportunities that are available? We do. Um, for next year, we are currently specifically looking for a co-teacher at the elementary level. We do co-teach in all of our classrooms, uh, pre-K through five. And then on the middle school, what are you looking for, Ryan? Uh, we're looking for a seventh or an eighth grade English teacher. Um, so it's, uh, we just want to start if, if you don't have people that are exactly looking for those two spots, we just want to still put ourselves out here in this space and let you know, to start researching about us. And so that we can invite you into the building to get to know more about us as more opportunities become open in the future. We not, we might not be exactly the match that people are looking for at this exact season in life, but, um, we uh, really want to be part of the conversation and we want to be part of the learning of what we can do to improve our city. Emily, I like I like what you just said there about how um, <clears throat> perhaps Brookside isn't the fit for a person and, and vice versa, right? Um, Correct. And so as you're looking for candidates for these positions and in the future, what qualities or skills would you like to see in those candidates? Uh, that's a great question. We would like to see somebody who uh, is not afraid to be a pioneer in this space, so to speak. Um, I, like I said, I don't want to be the onus. You will not be the sole Latinx um, educator in the building, but you will be in a small, small group. And so I don't want the whole onus of what you bring to the table or what your experience might be while you're in the school to be inside of that small, small group. But like I said, the kids need this. So whatever we need to do, um, but it will be a pioneering role. It will be a role where um, I, I hope we don't make you feel isolated, but it might be a little isolating. And so we would need to be, maintain open communication. So we make sure that um, the individual was feeling supported and feeling like their voice at the table had equity. So that's going to be important. Someone who's not afraid of conversations that might get difficult um, and um, just in general coachability and collaboration. Uh, you'll be trained to do the seven habits. So someone who thinks the seven habits aren't a bad thing <laughs> would be nice, but uh, that training is available when you join the organization. So really just someone who believes in all kids. I mean, I think all schools are wanting, you know, just uh, really people that are there to make our city better and, and make education better. So we're looking for the same quality individuals as everybody else. Um, ours would just be a little bit of a unique journey for specifically a Latinx educator because it's a new journey for us. You know, I, I appreciate your transparency and your willingness to engage in that dialogue. Um, uh, we've had this conversation, you've, you've actually brought it up too, the fact that um, a lot of Latinx educators, particularly first and second year um, Latinx educators, um, often feel isolated in, in, in the buildings and in, in the community. So the fact that you're even aware of that um, is, is incredibly powerful. And the fact that you're willing to address those issues as they come along is, it speaks highly of, I think, the culture that you, you have and you try to build at, at Brookside. So thank you for elevating that. Um, thank you for taking a risk and having us be here for the conversation. <laughs> 
Uh, not a risk at all. We, we're just greatly appreciative <laughs> that, you know, you're willing to share the opportunities with our community. And you're also taking a risk with because this is our first virtual career fair and who knows what that was going to look like. Um, and so it's, it's been, it's been a fun experience. Let me, I let me, see your uh, videos every day, Edgar. These are beautiful <laughs> videos you're putting out during this quarantine. Oh, uh, you great, know, great content. Uh, yep. Uh, wow. Okay. Thank well, you. unexpected, but thank you for that. Um, <laughs> Susanna, what other questions uh, do you have of our, of, of our friends here? Um, so, Someone that has experience with the seven habits from someone that has experienced the seven habits. How do you think that that um, impacts your student leadership at your school? What is what does a student um, kind of morale look like, and how do they take lead of of what happens there? I'll begin with that one. I knew he was. Um, yeah, right. Um, one thing that for sure it empowers our students. It gives them a voice in what they would like for their school to look like, not only their school, but also their community. It also gives them responsibility that they have to take ownership for and be there for not just themselves, but for each other and for the school and for the community as in, in general. So my part or what I think leadership uh, leader in me does for our students is empower them and give them a voice because our students ultimately make the school. We just direct it. Mm. I would agree. Uh, our middle school students get to um, fill out specifically for internships, but um, the there is an eighth habit that uh, it is specifically student voice. And so um, we're, uh, we're really um, keen on getting the students. Like I said, they helped write the mission vision. Our parents did too. We try to involve our stakeholders at all levels. I'm not saying we're perfect, but that is um, our vision that we involve you in everything. And um, there's a it, there's just so much that goes to Leader in Me. It really is the foundation of how you believe, you know, that you just operate through life and it's based on good practices. So um, it's caring about others. It's making sure to have an abundance mentality. There's enough to go around for everyone. It's making sure to think win-win, you know, how can everyone succeed in this situation? So um, as we do things like restorative circles or restorative practice, or we have peer um, uh, where you yes. problem solved and you go to your peers, or we have green dot, or we have all of these things where students can step up and be the leaders of their own solutions. Um, we as adults need to have that training just so that we model for them. We don't say one thing and act a different way, but really the students help drive the direction of the school so yeah. and then working with kids that you know come from a lot of trauma and a lot of sense of lack and 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 not a lot of self-confidence it builds them up and when students you know have problems or concerns or conflicts it's the biggest thing in the world to them but we like to bring those students together and help them problem solve because most of the time when our students in our school have a problem with each other they figure it out. We just facilitate it. And that, I think that's also the part of just being in the leader of me school. You know, what, really uh, what I appreciate about also your commitment, um, I love that uh, the eighth leadership habit is student voice. Um, and and it, it seems like you all do a really phenomenal job of elevating student voice. I love the action um, committees that come from, from, from that perspective as well. And so if, if students see any issues within, within their community, um, I love how they're um, welcomed and empowered to to solve um, the issues themselves and, and bring those up to the forefront. So uh, that's that's um, that's really cool. When done well, it's very exciting. Yes, <laughs> I agree. I appreciate that commitment to uh, to commitment to effectiveness. Um, so uh, yeah. <laughs> um, well, as we as we near our um, our well the end of this conversation, what are some things that you love for our community to know that we may not have covered? I think um, just something simple, maybe cliche, that we are a Jew to the community, that um, we do a lot, not only to help our students, but we also do a lot to help our families. Um, we never know what situation arises. And when it does, we have action committees and teams that get together, problem solve, and find ways to help our community. So if they didn't understand that about Brookside Charter School, 
I think they need to know. Yeah, we just invite um, when we're able to come uh, in person again together, please come visit and just feel the culture yourself. There's a lot of good schools out there doing great things right now. And there's a lot of great school leaders right now. So um, what I just want you to know is to consider us uh, in that bucket of greatness and come see for yourself if uh, it feels that way to you and if the culture feels welcoming and it feels like the sort of uh, we're all sort of pulling in the same direction, aren't we? We all want our city to improve. We all want to raise our children into a safer environment where um, they have more access to opportunities. So that's not unique about us, but I just would invite you to come in and get the feel of that and see if uh, you wanna be working in the right direction with us too. That's so awesome. Before we end here, I'm just gonna quickly put up the screen. Um, if you do wanna connect with Brookside Charter School, feel free to follow them on their social media accounts. Um, I'll leave that up just for a second so you can see them. Um, we will be posting the available job opportunities in, in the comments below. Um, so make sure to follow there. And if you do want a direct introduction um, to James, Ryan, Emily, um, we're, please fill out the form that uh, um, we'll, we'll post below as well so we can make those introductions on your behalf. Um, thank you so much. Uh, this was a, fun, a phenomenal conversation and, and uh, appreciate you joining us today. We yeah, appreciate you, being joined. Thank you guys for having us. Thank, thank you, everyone. You. Have a great day. You, you too. Well. Bye.